In the expansion of my content now ranging from PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 content together. I also gained viewership from both PS3 and PS4 subscribers all the same. And amidst this I get asked this question and so I can honestly and wholeheartedly sit here for a bit and I can answer the question as to why this is. I make the honest effort to stay honest and true to all of you so I have no reason to lie so asking me a question I can definitely give you an answer then and there based off of how I feel and any input involved. The question at hand here is to whether or not you want me to be showing Fall of Cybertron PlayStation 4 in my own right or if I'm going to buy it in my own right now that I have access to the PlayStation 4. This is not available through the game share that I presently have going on with a friend of mine, an old Destiny player of mine. He doesn't have this on his registration of games that he's bought because he doesn't see it as a game of his merit or a game that he could see himself playing anymore. He did play it once upon a time on the PlayStation 3 version, but after the first day, he stopped playing it and never picked it up again. He said WFC is better, and I can agree still. Over the past couple of months, the funds I've been slowly accumulating for my PlayStation 4 wallet, I've been uh, saving up $10 here and there in order to find when, whenever I could. And I've saved up, and so rather than getting Star Ocean 5, which I did get Star Ocean 5, I could have gotten FOC for PlayStation 4 practically at any time. But I decided to hold off and take a delve into newer interests and newer video games that I haven't had a chance to look into or that I usually and typically cannot have an opportunity to see in my own right because it's so exclusive or the, way, or the availability is very scarce. <clears throat> My main hindrances on the PlayStation 4 variation mainly is between what type of project I would want to work on on the PlayStation 4 version and where do I want to be at on leaderboards. Because the main reason why anybody bought this bought the PlayStation 4 version, not so much to continue playing it in the new generation, but is to also have a place on leaderboards without all the major kill hogs or major big time players that can easily reach leaderboards on day one and sustain the top positions very easily because they know how to get kills. The players that would be playing this now more or less wouldn't have to worry about those players having made the either the full conversion or made the the change or the switch completely in order to be on the be on the newer version so you wouldn't have to worry about them all as greatly. Some of them still pop up here and there, but not as frequently as they once did. The gameplay and leaderboard outlines from what it is I could see based off of past game share and gameplays and uh, what it is I could probably see in my own right eventually is that this mainly goes to a newer crop of players that are trying to get really good at playing the game and they are on their way. Some of them are going about it in the right sense and they are going to be really good players one day. Idea layout one is for me leaderboards and this would be the reason why. Back when I was first coming up, why I grinded leaderboards so much also in getting good, which was the end result of me having sustained and gone through Team Deathmatch and other game modes so many different times, rinse and repeat, over the past two or three years. I found myself in a lot of different leaderboards positions, like on for PlayStation 3 version. Con uh, was Conquest, I found myself in the top two, uh, 2,500. And I capture the flag, I'm all the way down in the 9,000s. Uh, Headhunter, not even scratched it. Uh, player kills, um, rank 600, somewhere in the mid 600s. And team deathmatch itself, I'm at rank 460 something or other. I can't recollect, but I know I'm, I know I passed the 500 point margin. And so I'm among the top 500 players in the world. But the problem for me after a while was not being able to reach the top 20 margin. And that bothered me somewhat because I would like to see myself amongst the top 20 players that you can just click on and you automatically see their name because they're associated with that game mode and associated with the game. 
and everybody at one point or another, even if they no longer have it, they had had that position at some point or another for the game. I've had my time on Rise of the Dark Spark where I did hold the number one position on Downfall, in addition to holding the top 20 position on all the other maps presentable in the game. I have reached that pinnacle point, but after a while it just got boring doing the escalation thing there. I let it be, and until I did lose what it is that I had, I lost it on all eight maps. But that's okay, because it was something that I could at least lay some credit to one time, that I was able to reach escalation mode number one one time, even if I can no longer do it again. And I like to say the same thing for Team Deathmatch at some point or another, but the problem is that it's the bar has been set so astronomically high by players just spamming Team Deathmatch because they're too lazy to do something else, or they're not trying to explore the set option given in trying new things that you're not accustomed to, that it's blurred my thinking in setting this up accordingly and trying to crunch the numbers accurately. On the PS3 version, how I was able to go from rank 500 and something something all the way down to 490 in less than in about the time frame of a month was because I systematically crunched the numbers in how many times I would need to pull 15 plus or 20 plus games, depending upon the mindset if I'm in or if I'm in the zone. How many kills I would have to do, how many deaths to not get, that way I can continue kill streaks. In addition to using item use and using the recharger and using items, which also get you points among item use for public modes as opposed to private modes. And to be sure to crunch the number, uh, uh, was it also getting headshots or being able to get side challenges along the way? All those things that accumulate that you want to see how, how well you can repeat. And then the points stack up. And then doing this over the time frame of either hours or hours into days or days into possibly a week's time frame, depending upon how many hours per day or days per week that you do sit in no life the game, let's say. Let's be honest about it. <clears throat> and in crunching the numbers as I did, I was able to successfully attain what it is that I had wanted by cracking the 500 point margin but it's harder trying to reach the 400 point margin past that point. Now for the PlayStation 4's version based off of the score outline from when I last got a screenshot from either Code Reflection or Jacob, the score deviation there is a lot lower. It's not past the millions and half it's not past the it's not past the million or 2 million marker yet. And so it's a lot, so it's very, it would be very easy to crunch the numbers and assess a decent time frame of when possibly good games are going on or de depending upon the availability of said games because it seems like it might go back and forth between lobbies depending upon how fresh or new the game is to the PlayStation 4 community of it. And then also taking into consideration the setback of high score accumulations due to spammers and possible glitchers. Because when I looked at the mechanics and the base outline of this from when I was tuning in to uh, Jovi Max stream of this, is that they still didn't go through the effort in patching up a lot of the glitches. So anybody who was a tryhard on the PlayStation 3 version could just as easily screw over actually good people good players on the PlayStation 4 version. And I'm like, fuck that. I'm not going to go through all that work just to run into more spamming jackasses that don't know how to get good. While, yes, but Activision did go through the effort in buffing up said outlines from the beta of the initial PlayStation 3 launch of the game, and I think nerfing the Destroyer or something like that, which I'm actually okay with even though I do specialize in that, I'm fine with that. Even though they went through the trouble of doing more pros and cons to all the class setups to make it universally more equal in their own right so the destroyer or leader class isn't as dominant this time around as it was in the past platforms. 
it it just doesn't sit well with me because the option is still there for it to be taken advantage of to get easy kills and not actually getting better at playing the game and a whole lot of players could easily take advantage of that loophole not knowing the fine line between both differences i mean don't get me wrong i mean Taking advantage of all the guns, even the spamming guns and the really cheap guns and cheap perks are nice in their own way when you want to try and troll somebody, but it just doesn't sit well with me to see the possibility of a whole new generation of spammers like a next generation Keys or Bane or Gears come into fruition very easily. And then rather than changing it up and learning a whole lot of new different things about the game that you may not have known before, you're secluding yourself to the one thing that you know best and that you're always going to keep coming back to. And while that's nice to have your trump card, so to speak, come into play whenever it is you want to with your best setups, it also pays to have other things built around said thing so you're not always reliant on one strategy over and over again like a beautiful looking one trick pony. <clears throat> Next is just the lack of involvement in other game modes because when I see other people's streams and I go across numerous different Transformers live streams in order to just see what it is that's going on and what makes this game feel so good, whether or not it's the controls or the difference in environment or hell, even the, just the change of the color palettes to just make you feel like a boss when you're out there doing what you do in public. But it's... There's no other there's no other game modes that are active on PlayStation 4 version. It's just team deathmatch and people trying to rack up things there and on um, player kills. It's boring. TDM is fun at first, but it's boring and lazy. And in addition to this, it goes in and out. So there are times when there's a good lobby going and then an hour, two hours later, there's probably no game at all. I think this probably might vary depending upon the time of day and the availability during time of day in whether or not there's a good amount of people that do want to play or that are just taking other game options and other interests, which is understandable. But it leaves very little to be desired in complete entertainment from the video game. And that was slowly lost on the PlayStation 3 version over the years as a lot of good players that Spe that specialized in doing different game modes and that made the effort in going through the process in getting people to do different game modes slowly left and then as soon as this one for PlayStation 4 came I was hoping that the majority of them would come back and they did originally on the launch night and the launch day of PlayStation 4's version but are very slowly not playing the game as often amidst losing themselves in other video game interests Less people, less interaction, and less of a fascination. But it's also more of a fascination in seeing what the new era of gamers do bring in. <clears throat> Idea 2 is my project layout and what it is I want to do in playing the game. Rather than just repeating the gameplay over and over again that's going to be presented, I also want to try and think of an innovative way to show my progress or transgressions through the PlayStation 4 outline of the game. To the viewers that haven't already been done and that's what's going to be the hard part because anybody who streamed this so far it's always been team deathmatch and so to me trying to stream team deathmatch would be an effort in futility and needless ultimately an idea here would be to join or create my own lobbies for capture the flag or conquest or headhunter and just wait for people to join but trying to live stream that would be again a waste of time because there would be nobody joining in as quickly as they would for other game modes that are more popular or more lackadaisical my next idea was to take an idea that i had seen on strax's channel about the road to prime series and what it is he did for Team Deathmatch in order to eventually successfully attain Prime Mode twice over for both his normal account and for DMG Elucidator. Now while I could do the same thing for both my Rodimus 8 account, my Rodimus Prime 86 account, and my Tact Rhinox account, it would be more beneficial to just focus in the one clan activity's main triumph rather than all three of them because I don't intend to actually wholeheartedly have all three 
accounts accessible on PlayStation 4. I have enough time just trying to manage the one with the many options presented through the PlayStation Plus accessibility without needing to put more money into other accounts in order to make sure that they too can be PlayStation 4 accessible on through PlayStation Plus. That's more money tied up in more accounts when I only really need to have one benefit me. And in tow of having the one account benefit me, which it would be my primary account for PlayStation 4, it's less hassle and less of a financial strain needlessly to switch back and forth between them. I can easily switch back and forth between them without any hassle on PlayStation 3, which I already do. But back to the Road to Prime series or knockoff idea that I had in mind, it's something that I want to try and talk about with Straxus in order to help give me an elaboration on the idea or if I could just use the idea, the same idea, but under a different name, like uh, uh, like Journey to Prime Status, or Journey to Primus, or Journey of the Matrix, or something like that. Something that would be catchy and relevant to the content. This is merely an idea in contemplation, so it's not something I can actually try to implement without further concrete layout. And lastly, while this last idea was also in contemplation, the idea was for me to live stream the one-on-ones that I would try to partake in on the PlayStation 4 platform. So rather than having them and posting them, I would allow the viewers to see how it is I combat a lot of my opponents at the time when they are happening. That way you're right there along with me, exempting people trying to give me tips in the middle of me trying to focus what it is I do is how I play. It's a part of my playing style. It's what's brought me success, win or lose. So that would be the case. And I would cut off spectators. I wouldn't have spectators in the match and involuntarily getting in my way as past situations would insinuate. And so I'd just rather cut the BS out altogether. You either watch from the live stream or you don't watch at all. And so taking that into consideration with, well, there's also the minor extremity of particular players that play the PlayStation 4 version that I don't like, nor that I have ever liked, that are back in the picture here and there, and so I don't want to try and put on a happy face and pretend like I actually like talking to them half the time, and so I just ignore them and block them and I just don't interact with them. And so that's why I just, another reason why I stayed out of the community, but it's trivial. Anyway, like I was saying, the main reasons why I said to barring my projects, ide my project ideas, and how to exactly play the game with one game mode as opposed to the numerous game modes given, I've been indecisive about what I want to do, and so I won't spend my money unnecessarily. I like to have an educated per purchase with all my games and to give it some type of purpose as to why I want to play it, not just for fun with friends, but to also get my, <clears throat> give myself something to do, that way I don't get bored playing it when friends aren't around. It gives myself a reason to further grind the game, or to further play the game past normal expectancy. This isn't just with this game, but this is also all the games that I've ever purchased. And as I continue to play the game and lose myself more in the grid, I continue to make sure that I have educated purchases. This way the game can be enjoyed more and I feel more like I profited at the end having experienced everything there is to offer. Leave me your thoughts, if any. Peace, guys.